Just kidding, it's me, Thomas, and this is my coffee mug. You know what I loved as a kid? Playing Super Mario with my older sisters on the NES. But you know what I hated about that? I would never actually get to play. My sisters would give me a controller that was unplugged. I thought I was controlling the player on the screen, but I was too much of an idiot to catch on to what was really going on. And there's a lot of childhood trauma to explore there, but long story short, I came up with an idea where I could escape those lonely childhood memories by recreating the first video game I ever played, but with a twist. I wanted to be able to play it simultaneously with my friends. So let me show you how I made Mario into a multiplayer game. I figured there's really only two steps to make this happen. Step one is to recreate Super Mario Bros. 1 in Unity. I figured I could start with at least the first level and go from there. The second step is to add multiplayer to the game, which should be super easy, so we're not even going to worry about that. I'm what some might call a developer prodigy when it comes to Unity, so obviously that was my game engine of choice. So I wanted the placement of everything on the level to be an exact copy of the original game. So I found a photo online of the 1-1 world in its entirety. I used this as my background and simply added colliders where they would make sense. Once I'd identified where the different blocks and enemies should appear, I went ahead and erased those from the background as well. For initial playtesting, I went with this hyper-realistic character model of Mario. I put a collider behind the player so they couldn't move backwards in the level and had the camera pan to the right if the player moved over halfway across the screen. Then I turned to those classic question mark blocks. I added some placeholder art and added a simple animation to bounce it up when the player hits it. That's good enough. Now that the question mark blocks are more or less working, I gotta add that sexy mushroom to spawn out of it. That basically worked as intended. Then I added some scripting so it would change directions whenever it ran into something. And also you can mount it like a horse. Moving on to the brick blocks, I just had those spawn four smaller versions of themselves when they were hit, and that was looking pretty good. Now the world was coming together, but it still felt really lonely. I didn't even have the Goombas and the Koopa on this level to keep me company, and it still felt really lonely. Now something you guys may not know about me is that I'm a greedy bastard, so I figured there's no point in playing this game unless we can collect those sweet coins. I just used the same logic for spawning the mushroom to spawn a coin that would play its little fly animation. I even added in that cheeky little invisible 1-up block, if you know where to look. Alright, but now we're overdue for adding some life to this level. For those who are unaware, there are two enemy types in this world, a bunch of Goombas and one Koopa Boy. The funny thing about the enemies is that they behave very similarly to the mushroom. We just need to play a little walk animation and change their direction when they run into stuff. They need a proper death though, so let's add some squishiness and give the player some points for their efforts. And since I'm the one that's in charge here, I can set up my own Goomba Massacre. <laughs> And we can't forget about our turtle guy. I had to create a second sprite for him for his walk animation, and I think it actually turned out pretty good if I don't say so myself. It was at this point that I started thinking that maybe our little red ball didn't actually look all that much like Mario after all. So I suppose it's time to get this player properly animated. I found this awesome website with the different sprite states for our hero, so, you know, I snagged that right up. And because I can't be trusted to do anything the proper way, I just assigned each sprite its own sprite renderer, and I used animations to turn those on and off whenever I needed them. And good golly did I underestimate how tedious this would be. Do you know how many animation clips I needed for this? 18. Because Mario can be big and small, have firepower while big or small, can die and die with firepower, and he can jump and grab the flagpole in all those states. But it is what it is. I dug my own grave here. It was at this point that I felt like I had the majority of this game completed, so it was time to add in a multiplayer component. I was contemplating a few different ways I could do this. You know, like they say, there's more than one way to skin a multiplayer cat. 
Now, I must ask you a question. Which multiplayer implementation do you think I used? Get it? It's a pun. Which is funny because pun is the exact thing I used to get the multiplayer up and running. <coughs> Now for those who don't know, PUN stands for Photon Unity Networking, and it's actually relatively easy to work with. They let you have a free server for up to 20 concurrent players, and you can pay them to manage servers as you scale up concurrent players. I won't bore you with all the technical jargon for all the multiplayer stuff, but it only took me just a few hours to get everything working as I would mostly expect it. And boy, let me tell you, nothing is lonelier than developing a multiplayer game by yourself. I had to run multiple simultaneous builds to test it, and sitting there by yourself, knowing that you're the one controlling all the different players on the screen, is one of the cruelest jokes I've made myself endure. Like a true retro masochist, I had a handful of 8-bit plumbers running around together, but no one to enjoy it with. Once the game was complete, I was ready to hit the big leagues. So I sent out messages to all my friends and chat rooms I was a part of and waited for everyone to start streaming in. By the end of it, I had a total of two other people join my game, which is a 100% increase over what I was expecting. Now I don't know if it was the tremendous turnout of players or the late onset puberty that was making my hands sweaty, but I struggled to contain my excitement as I was finally able to play my favorite childhood game alongside my friends. The rules were simple. If you die, you have to wait until someone reaches the flag to respawn. When someone wins the level, everyone else on the map dies and the level restarts. Now something that I wasn't expecting was how much multiple players changes the gameplay of Mario. Suddenly every mushroom and fire flower was a scarce commodity, as each of us would rush to beat each other to them. And it was the exact opposite with enemies. Unlike when playing as an individual, it was now advantageous to wait and let someone jump in front of you to kill the enemies so you had less of a chance of dying. Man, working through this project gave me a much greater appreciation of this game's unique and purposeful level design. Every inch of the 1-1 world is meant to introduce the player to a gameplay mechanic. And I have to say, hats off to Shigeru Miyamoto for his game design prowess and how he was able to pioneer the way for future game designers like myself. My heart yearns to release this game to the public so that everyone can have a go at it, but I just don't think my bank account can afford the legal fees that I would have to pay. I'm not a lawyer, but I imagine that publishing this game online would be a big copyright no-no. So thanks for coming on this journey with me. If you enjoyed the video, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.